Wig colors. Anyways, welcome to Forex Start today, guys. Let's get going. Life is good. Life is beautiful. Too shot, at least it should be. All right, get out of my What? Oh, where's my, oh, oh. What, what, where's my other disclaimer? All right, well, I will use this disclaimer. Gee whiz, scatterbrain today. Sorry. Big, it was a big day yesterday. Anyways, hey, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results, so please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money cannot afford to lose. We can also do the long version, which is really good because if you're going to say a disclaimer, people should actually listen and pay attention. And I mean, that's the whole point. So we could say, Welcome to Forex Dot Today. Let me remind you that the purpose of this presentation is education. This is not an alert service. I am not here to make trade recommendations. I will conduct technical and fundamental analysis, and I'll do so in real time, pip by pip, candle by candle, with the overriding goal of helping you put together trade plans throughout this beautiful New York trading session. If you're trading along with me using a demo account from Trader's Way, then regardless of whether your plans are successful or not, you will have an opportunity to learn. Trading and investing is risky and not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, however, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. So please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Whoa, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was not bad, right? No script or anything. Whoa, that's good. Boom. Hey, huh? Feeling good, feeling good. It's going to be a good day. I feel it. Do you want me to do it again, Pete? <laughs> Pete wants a repeat. Now, one Pete's enough, right? So anyways, yeah, hi. Hi, my name is Wayne. I'm a currency trader. How are you doing? Very nice to meet you. you want to trade some currencies today? Yep, yep, yep. We can do that. I'll try to babble a lot less. I'm just not getting a lot of sleep, but that's all right. That's what happens. Don't worry about it, Uncle Wayne. So uh, I'll try to babble a lot less in the next few days, and uh, we'll, we'll just do, I don't know, trading basics. Maybe we'll just assume nothing or something. I don't know. But anyways, I do these sessions every day with passion and love. Um, I try to treat you like respect. Sometimes I, if I babble, I stick my feet in my mouth, and I, I don't know. So I apologize. So I love you. I care about you. I want you to succeed, and that's why I'm here every single day, and that's why Trader Way wants me to be here every single day because they want you to succeed too. So there's two business models that uh, brokers use. The, the typical one is – uh, find some way to get you put in a thousand bucks into a trading account with the assumption that you're going to blow up the trading account anyways and, and it's churn and burn, whatever. But a trader's way, they're different. What they want is for you to succeed so that you trade conservatively with discipline so that you can trade for years and years and years and years. And you know, you'll grow your account size. Your lot size will grow as well. So that's good. And then maybe one day you'll even start a, a Forex trading, you know, managed program. And you could use Trader's Way for that as well. So we think of investing in you on the long run is the best uh, business model. But it also makes the world a better place. So join the team, huh? Tradersway.com, yo. 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday here at Forex Start Today. Once a month, I'm over at FX Street for Trade Non-Farm Payrolls Live. Uh, we're 60 days away from my 12-year anniversary of doing that one particular webinar. Uh, your last guru hasn't even traded Forex for 12 years. So anyways, good to have you. Good to be here. Uh, let's, get the, let's get the move. Let's get the trade on, huh? 
So uh, I don't have any trades on now. Um, let's go like, uh, I guess I gotta go here. No open positions. Yesterday, um, I left you with six, six trades. I, I think uh, one or two of them were profitable. One or two of them were not profitable, but nothing was bad or, or anything like that. Uh, uh, where'd my chart go? Um, which one do I want to show? No, no. Hang on. Well, I'll just bring up a new one. I want to bring up Forex stuff today. Forex stuff today. By the way, uh, I'm going to meet with the uh, programmer later today, and I want to make some changes to the way that you post. I mean, not changes. I want to make it easier to write a quality pro, uh, post. Just a little, just a, a little bit better WYSIWYG and uh, editor, a little easier to add photos, and a little easier way to organize these things. So uh, look forward to that. Um, what did I want to do? Where was I going? Uh, calendar? Oh, I know what I was doing. Oh, so um, on the activity report, I posted it. Uh, 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 here it is. Trade plans for today. And this was, I can't see the time. This was probably two hours or so after um, the webinar ended, maybe three. You can see they started to work out. This has a total of uh, 300 bucks. However, it's only a $38,000 account. So that's pretty decent, pretty, um, um, that's pretty decent, um, but, 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 but uh, percentage-wise for for a trading day. But so, anyways, the dollar started to move, and then um, then I got knocked out on these pullbacks that we had overnight while I was sleeping. This pullback, this pullback, this pullback. They knocked me out for profit. Uh, 200 here, 200 here, uh, combine this for about 100, 149. So, that was good. They moved, but the thing is, they came, came back, knocked me out, and then dropped again. <laughs> no! So, you know, if you're trading the London session, your job was to catch that for sure. So, it's, uh, you know, it's one of these things you want to cry, like, oh... But um, I was right, but if only I'd taken more risk. Well, I don't take more risk, so that's just how it goes. Yeah, you know, but that's why. So it's hard for me because my, my prime sleeping hours are typically during the London Open, right? So it's just, to me, it's just part of the beast. I mean, I, I, I choose. And maybe that's why I've grown to really like swing trades. You know, because sometimes you can, your, your trade is bigger than one session. But anyways, uh, there are lots of reasons for me to move my stops. If you see, like, these were pivot profit zones. So, you know, I took profit and pivot profit zones on a lot of these trades. And, um, like, uh, even USD CAD, I was above the profit zone and uh, whatever. It's just, you know, I, I got enough. It was enough. Uh, it could have been more, but... Risk reward is a function of risk, and I don't like risk, so whatever. Made the daily bread for for that account, and so on and so forth. So there are trades there, and they and you know they're correlated, right? In that case, I bought dollar across the board. I bet on all the horses, right? I bet on all the horses. Because you know, generally, if you place one trade, let's say I want to buy dollar. I've decided I'm a bull on the U.S. dollar. If I only make one trade, I have to make two determined uh, 
there are two determinants of the success of that trade. How right I am on picking a strong dollar, but also how right I am in picking a weak other currency. That's two bets. So that's relative strength, but also in real time, right? So how do I smooth the curve or, or make the playing field a little more even? How do I make the, the odds, um, let's say, more consistent in my general idea, which is simply to buy a dollar? Yeah, spread it out on multiple trades, because now I'm not saying, well, the dollar strong and the pound is weak, and therefore I put them together. I'm saying, well, the, the dollar strong in general against everything. And some are going to be more right than others. So like the, the USD CAD, I made 30 pips. The euro, right? But the euro dollar, I made 200 pips. It was the same trade, right? I was buying dollar against something, but my, one was righter than the other. So if I bet on all of them, it's almost like an index, if you think about it that, right? A, a weighted, no, a non-weighted index, if you put... One mini lot, 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 one million mini lot. That's the same as shorting the euro dollar with one standard. But I've spread my risk. I bet on all the horses. And if I'm right, some of these will be really right. And if I'm and if I'm right, I'll be a, a little bit less right than the others, if that makes sense, right? Hey, Juan, does that make sense? I don't, I don't know if you like that kind of stuff. And by the way, Olympia and uh, Aslan, who's not on yet, they are joining the team. Uh, Olympio, you've probably seen his posts. Um, he has an MBA and a current trader for many years. Uh, he's going to uh, help us improve our news section, and he's going to do sort of real-time reporting. And so you can click on activity. We'll improve this page, and we'll put this feed in another place as well, just so it's easier to track when you get. And then, uh, and so he does the London morning. And then the New York morning, Oslan's going to take over, and he's the uh, he's the guy that used he hasn't been posting in the last few months, but he was posting in the past. He's been working on his PhD in in economics, so he's been delayed. But he's going to spend uh, the morning, the New York morning, doing the same thing, um, improving the news section, uh, providing real time sort of tweets, but also making uh, posts and summaries for the session generally. Uh, fundamental focused They're, they'll throw in some technicals as well but you may want to watch that so you can see olympia has been posting so he was reminding you uh well i guess there's a bitcoin <laughs> oh sorry ecb bulletin he's talking about the uh, um, aussie dollar dropping he's got a euro pound thing here and then he's like don't forget to, to read the boe mi minutes the the events in 15 so he's giving you heads up and links and just kind of keeping you in tune in real time. Okay, so just uh, help us with this experiment and see uh, see if it benefits you. Yeah, and of course the fee for that is uh, your love, your, your respect, your admiration. Okay. Yeah, so just pay a little more attention to that because you probably have never even been to that page. You're like, wow, what is that? No one's ever used that before. All right, well, let's use it. And you know, and I think this could evolve. If it, if you like it, I think what this could evolve into is a, a live chat room during trading hours where you can chat with other traders, but then there's a moderator that's also saying, hey, check out the Aussie dollar double. Hey. Bank of England, uh, you know, meeting in, in 15 minutes.
Kale wants to start reading monetary policy reports after all the, from all the major central banks. Should have started this uh, months ago. Been living under a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyways, yeah. So we were kind of talking about that before. Wouldn't it be cool to to have a, a hangout, or not a hangout, but uh, at least a chat room for you guys to to be involved while this is happening? So, uh, you know, if you want that, we're going to try to do it. So get involved and, and participate, right? Cool. Um, so yeah, so let's go to the calendar. Oops, what did I click on? Oh yeah, and so uh, Aslan and Olympia will also be posting uh, session summaries. So Olympia was probably writing his um, summary for the London session. So that'll be coming out and you'll be posting that every day along with the other posts. So you'll see that under the new section. Um, okay. What I want to do is calendar, sorry. Okay. So what you do is you can organize that like today, for example. Oops. Boop. Click on today. Here's today's news. All the Bank of England stuff, no change in rates. That's Bank of England rates. Did you see the 10 year T note uh, out of the US? One, oh, sorry, 2.84. Wow. Wow. What does that mean? It means it's gone up almost 50%, probably 40 something percent in about a year year even less than a year in about nine months interest rates have gone up 40% in the United States right I nobody thinks of it that way oh it's up a few basis points well it's 40% higher than it was <laughs> nine months ago or a year ago yeah I mean it I mean it's something right I mean wow so then you look at, uh, so what, what are the interest rates in the United States? 1.5%, right? And then you look at the, the Bank of England, their interest rate is 0.5. About, well, 1% difference, right? But check it out. If you look at uh, the 10-year the US Treasury versus the 10-year uh, British uh, Treasury, they're about 1% apart. They're, it, it's paying about 1.8, and the U.S. 10 years is paying 2.8. Hmm. I wonder if it has anything to do with that, <laughs> that interest rate. <laughs> right? Hmm. This is my beard of wisdom, by the way. Hmm. What, what what do what do women do? Is it this or oh yes? It, interest rates have gone up. Yeah, you got to be fair though, right? You, it's not you don't have to have a beard of wisdom. But anyways, uh, so very interesting. Uh, yeah, and then Sam says, so does that mean dollar strength? Uh, well, that's what they tell you. But it's not always the case. It is a hair flip, isn't it? So I fell for a trick. You want to hear this? I'm in class, and the professor plays a video from a, a Nobel Prize winner giving a lecture on economics, right? I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. And the guy starts talking, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm kind of into it, but I'm thinking, like, I'm so smart. I'm going to figure this out. This guy's great. I'm all over this. This is going to be great. And all of a sudden, he's babbling on behavioral predictions of blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is great. I love behavioral science. I'm totally into this. And then he, and then he says, you know, you know, with perspective to, to Foucault. And I'm like, oh, Foucault. I read Foucault. I know everything there is about Foucault. Foucault is awesome. I got this. And then he, and then I'm, and then he's like something something in the wealth of nations. I'm like Adam Smith, boom, boom, 
boom, I've actually helped that book. I'm so smart. I'm the world's greatest economist. <laughs> this guy's going on. And then it becomes apparent. It's complicated to figure out what he's talking about, right? And I haven't even, I've been preaching to myself, but I haven't been listening, right? Right, like uh, Bono says, it, 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 it's uh, hard to listen while you preach. So anyways, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, I need to pay more attention. And then about five minutes in the book, he says, so all of this leads to one question. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> and he says, the whole thing was uh, computer-generated garbled nonsense that he had just inserted some uh, economic terms into. <laughs> and he had been just reading a babbling script of nothing. <laughs> and... And everyone else is like, I don't know what he's talking about. And I'm like, I totally know what he's talking about, man. I got it. Foucault, Adam Smith. Oh, yeah, behavioral finance. Come on, hit me with it. Give me some juice. And it was funny because I couldn't hear because I was too arrogant. You know, it's it just funny. I totally fell for it. Urgh! It's like a tuna on a hook, right? <laughs> I, Foucault! Yeah, that's right, great. Bring in Karl Marx, man. Let's do capital and labor. Yeah. So, anyways, it was just, uh, it was just funny. It's funny. It totally fell for it. But uh, everyone else, though, in the class, they're just like, uh, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't get it. It's too. This is too hard. Of course, he just wasn't actually saying anything. It was pretty funny. <clears throat> so back to the work here. Nothing's really changed. Uh, interest rates are going up in the United States. They're not going up in England. But they are talking about it, aren't they? Did you guys read the uh, inflation data? Obviously, I'm not listening to the speech. But they're like, huh, we didn't raise interest rates, but there's inflation. And it's not the good kind, is it? Yeah, well, November, <laughs> November, like 2030. I mean, that's so far in the future, right? <laughs> November is like, the world, might, we might get hit by a meteor by then, right? So, uh, so anyways, uh, that... They're going to have to do something, and it's for the wrong. It's the opposite reason, right? We have inflation in the United States. I guess you could kind of call it like demand side uh, for assets, stock markets up, and real estate's up, and all that kind of stuff. But I still think a lot of the inflation out of the UK was from the pound getting punished for Brexit. And having a weak currency, and a weak currency can do that, right? And I think over time, the pound will adjust. And it's not going to behave like the pound. So someone else said, um, hey, you know, shouldn't dollar be strong in that situation? Well, okay, what is the different? What is the major fundamental difference between the U.S. dollar and the Great British pound? Great. It's great. You know, besides that, it's a reserve currency. The U.S. dollar is a reserve currency. Okay. So how about this? Pay attention. Why don't, it's a good question, right? You should answer that. And not now. Pay attention. And then ask yourself, I wonder why not? And lead it. So the reason I say it that way is when I started, there were no gurus. There was nothing, no information, uh, no books or anything on Forex. So I kind of said to myself, I need to write my own textbook. And um, I need to do it by doing research. So I would read something like an economic report. I wasn't even that sophisticated, so I wasn't reading economic reports. But I'd look at my chart, and I'm like, I, I could add a stochastics. I'm like, well, what's a stochastics? And then, and they're like, well, it's an oscillator. I'm like, well, what's an oscillator, right? <laughs> you know? And then, 
And, but I would explore like, well, what is this? And I, I would explore what I don't know and then, and then teach myself that one little bit. Okay, oscillators measure overbought and oversold conditions of price, but you know, it's also used in other things and tops and bottom or whatever. And then it, that leads to the next and that leads to the next and just hyperlink for years, right? And grow your mind. So ask yourself, why is there a dichotomy between these things where um, the uh, the weak the weak pound and the weak dollar affect those two economies differently? And I've been saying I want the dollar to be weak in the United States. Weak is good to me. I've, I've been saying that for years and years and years and years and years. So if things are good, I want a weak dollar. Okay, to a point. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. So we got some housing starts out of Canada, fine, on trend, jobless, uh, and, uh, weekly jobless claims, you know, but that's, a, that's all on trend. We're at full employment. The bigger question isn't jobs. The big question is wages um, and labor force participation rate. And uh, I'm not sure how important the weekly claims are now. Uh, a few years ago, it was supremely important. Now we're just kind of asking different questions. So unless that the weekly da data set is way off, it probably won't matter that much. So think about it. If we're at full employment, non-farm payrolls should be slowing down, right? Because there's just, nobody needs a job. There are no more people. If everyone in the economy had a job, NFP would have terrible numbers, right? It'd be zero, but the labor for, force participation rate would be 100%. But the interesting thing is the size of the um, not in labor force number is still quite big. So we need, they call that slack. Do you remember when they, uh, when Yellen and maybe even Bernanke talked about that? Their, uh, you know, non-farm payrolls is improving. Um, but there's a lot of slack in the labor force or something they were talking about that. Well, that slack is still there. Okay. But do you remember that conversation maybe a week ago I talked about uh, it's not the 1% versus the 99%. It's like the tw top 25% versus the bottom 75. And they're going in two directions. Like if you're a college educated person in the United States, you're doing well, you know, well, you're middle class. If you have a graduate degree or better, uh, or a technical like engineering type degree, you're doing even better. But if you don't have a college degree in the United States of America, uh, things are way different. So uh, I, I think that's the interesting part where you have the not in labor force part of the population, the bottom 75%. That's going to be a problem. Because, you know, what size is the not in labor force for South Africa versus population, right? So the way you do that calculation, by the way, guys, I don't know if I'm babbling over top and I'll get back to the chart, sorry, right? So you have, uh, so let me show you, let, let's do a pie chart. Okay, so in the United States, uh, I'm gonna draw it, um, it probably looks pretty close. No, it's not even like that. Hang on, I gotta redo it. Uh, I'm going to do that, that, 
right? It's pretty bad. It's something like that, I think. Oops. Where um, this is the employed, this is the unemployed, this is the rest of the population. They're not even looking for a job. <laughs> You're like, what? They haven't had a job in months, nor are they even looking. Now, they might be retired. Okay, so you could explain that where you could say if that size of the pie has been increasing, it could be baby boomers, right, retiring. Uh, this, right, this could be full-time students. But there's a ton of people in here that just have a, a high school degree or less. They're just not working, not even looking to work, doing something else with their life. Because uh, I think even active military are in the workforce, right, stuff like that. So I don't know what they're doing. But the thing is, how big is this pie? So what we want is this part of the pie to shrink for them to move over to non-farm payrolls and for this side to increase, right? But what if it doesn't? What if these guys just can't get jobs in our economy? There's just no jobs to work at the factory putting, you know, making uh, panels or make uh, putting labels on cans of fruit, what, what, you know, making socks, right? What if there's no jobs like that? Because you're like, well, I'm uneducated. I can't work at Google. I don't even know how to use a laptop. I mean, like, what does that person do? Okay. So Sean's like, isn't there structural and uh, training, and this, that, and the other? But this is uh, something that economists work on, the size of the pie and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, I'm just talking about, like, the real questions that the economists are asking. You know how many uh, initial jobless claims? Okay, if that if that was if that spiked to something very significant, and then we saw it spike two or three or four weeks in a row. Okay, maybe that'd be important. But we're really more interested in labor force participation rate and wage growth. So put it this way: if the not employed, right? These are they're not looking for jobs. They're not in the labor force. If they suddenly enter the labor force and they're like, okay, I'm ready. I want to work now. That changes things, right? Because then wage growth won't go up because an, another, a new job will hit and someone will come out of the not looking for job and then suddenly they're like, that's a good job. I'll take that. Because they'll say, you know, I don't know, let's say, you know, $27 an hour for driving a forklift. Yeah, okay, my parole's over, and I haven't done drugs in two years, so okay, I'll go drive that, you know, because if you're driving a, in a warehouse, they're probably drug testing, right? And you're like, whoa, can't get that job. So eventually, if you can get that job, you're like, wow, $27 an hour is great, right? So you enter that, but then wages stay kind of low, right? But what if people don't reenter the workforce that used to be in the workforce? They say, I want to be counted in the labor force. The wage growth won't grow. Okay, If they don't enter, if they're out, like, that's it. These guys are not getting a job in the United States of America. Then what happens? Then other people, you know, if, if they want that job filled, they're going to have to offer more. $30 an hour for a forklifting. $35 an hour for driving a forklift. And pretty soon someone says, well, I don't you know, I may not be the world's greatest forklift driver. Maybe I'm not even certified yet. But thirty-five bucks an hour, and I'm and I'm making twenty-eight doing something. Maybe I'll do that. And you switch warehouses, right? And what happens is the same people move from job to job to job. It's transitory, which is a normal part. So remember the natural rate of unemployment. That's natural. That's a natural part of unemployment. You're like, you're not out of work, you're just switching jobs. 
but then the wages have to go up because what you're doing is you're not finding people without jobs. You're stealing people with jobs from somewhere else, right? You walk across to the warehouse across the street, you're like, hey, are you a forklift driver? Like, yeah, man. The dude, forklift's 12 years. W w what do you earn? 28. Pay you 35. Boom. You're my new best friend, right? And, and that's, what, that's how the world works. The competition moves that way, right? And then from that, you'll get inflation. But does it matter? On the long run, it won't. And you'll be able to prove this mathematically. Uh, I don't know in the real world, but mathematically. So if this guy earns 30% more money, but um, you know inflation goes up, in, in real terms, there may not be a change at all. So that's pretty detailed discussion of initial jobless claims. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get off the fundamental side and we'll, we'll do technical, but anyways, that's there. Uh, RBA meeting coming up. Okay. Pay attention to that. Aussie's going to move. And then Chinese CPI, Chinese PPI. Should you, what, what should you do? <clears throat> I think you should trade Asia today. What do you stake? Smells like a plan, huh? Yeah. Isn't it cool to have a, a Harvard-educated uh, analyst or economist that works for you for free in your trading firm? <laughs> right? And now you have an MBA and a PhD <clears throat> pulling new stats for you in real time for free. Cool, right? Yeah, Guy, I've been enjoying your uh, your posts again. It, it's been a, quite a while. I know you had some big projects there. With that in mind, maybe we should uh, we should take a look at one, huh? Harmonic trade setup, huh? Too complicated for a simple person like me. Okay. Euro Turkish Lira. <laughs> Domus is great. I was just chatting with him yesterday. So, anyways, uh, check that out. Huh? Nice little wedge. Up, 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 down, down, and then here, the wedge is considered. Uh, where you're making higher lows but not higher highs. So he says Euro is generally bullish. He says the smooth ride uh, earlier in January is now slowing down, but don't worry. Besides the clear reduction in bullish momentum, lower lows relative to upper Bollinger Band, main resistance of the line of the wedge. Yeah. 
That's pretty decent. I like the clarity of the chart. That's kind of neat. So wedges usually collapse and flags usually ex expand. Yeah, you're too old for pulling cables, man. So home for someone. Cool. Now look, Olympia just posted just a second ago, I guess. Yeah, pitchforks. I like pitchforks. I, I didn't know them as well as a lot of people. That seems right, but to me, it just highlights direction. I think often that's what I'm using them for, just to remind myself if I'm a bull or a bear. Like I, I look at this and I'm like, yeah, I think he might be short, <laughs> right? But there are rules. I don't know how far you want to get into pitchforks and stuff, but there are rules like. Uh, what what percentage of the time will it return to the you know the center line and all that kind of stuff, and that really right middle line here lower right there's all these percentages and stuff and I never really got into them that much, but you know my simple childlike mind, I th I think like this is the most important thing on the chart is just that it's going down right that's my first response to any chart am i am a buyer or am i a seller and i say well i think down so the rest is like lower high lower low lower high right lower low i mean you can get caught in all this noise or not right but i'm going to kind of keep looking for that until something wicked weird happens right so that's how i use uh pitchforks Let's look at Marky Mark. Resistance test, possible short opportunity. Yeah, okay, so uh, so, so Mark, are you in the room? The so home for someone. Do, 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 do. See, in this situation, I would change the time frame. So I don't disagree with this at all, but probably not in this time frame because there are micro moves here, right? This, uh, I'm looking at this chart and I see the lower low, the lower high, the lower, well, some noise in here, right? Lower low. And then this is a reset of this. So this is a slightly higher time frame, which is thinking this. Okay. So then once again on a lower time frame, I guess I gotta change colors again. Right. Uh wait. So there's this move going back to blue. Um, this comes in and there's some more noise, and this continues, but it's because so you can consider it like the blue line is like a 15-minute chart. The black line is like maybe an hourly chart. Okay. And then this plan to me is more like a four hour chart. Okay. In, in red. So we still have on this smaller time frame, we have this giant move here, but on the, going back to a 15 minute, I sure would like to see something like a double top on this blue area and then I might even want to see a break one two three type scenario right and in this case I'd probably fib from here to here and find out that this is also a 382 50 percent 618 and so my cell zone wouldn't even be the double top the, the cell zone would be the one, two, three. 
because I want to let this roll over. And because it's a higher time frame, there could be a lot of noise. And, and essentially, this ends up being the noise. But I tune, I tune everything else out, and I have the clarity. Any questions about that? So to me, it seems fine. It's an issue of fractal geometry. Yeah, well, no pullback there. So you have to ask yourself, is it the, is it the big Fed, uh, Fed move, if you want to call it that? Oops. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Is it a collapse on CAD? Or what? But at some point, you're going to have to ask yourself, is this truly a fundamental move? Okay. Also, as a trader now, because you're not an investor per se, and you're not an analyst per se. Your job is to trade, right? So don't, aren't you required by the law of trading that you have to take a shot there anyways? But you, but you understand that there can be some risk to that so that you then manage that risk? And if that doesn't work, there's going to be another opportunity kind of up in here. Right? That's ultimately what your job is to say, I know this is here, and I know this dollar has been strong, and, and it could last until, you know, uh, April 1st. And you're like, I have that on my books. I get it. I got it. I know it's good. My trades are tight. You wish you could, right? Uh, but there's no doubt that that's resistance. And at least maybe for 15 minutes, <laughs> an hour, four hours, a day, it could fall and you make money. You could say the vol this velocity says that there's going to be some profit taking, but then this dollar can stay strong to April. So I think it'll probably do something like this, and we'll end up sh selling it way up here, and and have a have this collapse in May. Why? Because in June we're going to start drawing down oil inventories. Well, how do I know that? Because I did 50 years of analysis, and it told me June 1st is the peak in oil inventories, on average, per year. So after June 1st, oil inventories are going to fall, and people are going to go, oh, my God, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, OPEC, OPEC, Venezuela, it's the Venezuela, oh, did you see the oil disruption in Libya, Woo! right? And oil prices will go up, the Canadian dollar will get strong, and... We'll be just cool. We'll be cool with the hill. We'll be chill. Right? Oh, you're like, really? Yeah. That was really shocking. Woo, that moving oil? Woo. Yeah, these can't predict the markets. Meanwhile, you're laughing inside. You're laughing. Yeah, you're right. This is a tough gig, man. Of course, you're, you're laughing at your competition. Your invisible competition. But anyways, life is great. Life is grand. Our life is good. It has to do with a fiscal year in Japan maybe some taxation in the United States of America as well. Thank you, Katie. No, so Katie, we can certainly talk about that if you post it, right? So I'm going to spend uh, more time every day giving you feedback on your posts because I, I believe that we'll have become 
a better trader to get feedback like this. We, you know, I mean, I'll go through my charts too, but I think at least two or three times we should we should look at your analysis and get some feedback. Okay. So we looked at that little direction there on Euro dollar. It seems interesting. I thought I saw Echo one do one. Yeah, here's Echo. My plan is to short US dollar Japanese yen today on a bearish signal confirmation on a pullback. So basically lower high, lower low. See, I get that. Beautiful, right? Nice little fib zone. I call that the sweet spot. Have it roll over. He's anticipating, I guess, dollar weakness, right? Be careful of the market. Managed to break uh, 109, yeah, 109.70, yeah, for show. Sure. The other thing I like about this post is the, the multiple time frames, right? So I can see what, what it looks like. Uh, I guess that's uh, this, okay? So he's selling into the double bottom. So now I see that, and I'm like, ooh, ah, that's a win dangerous uh, okay so I'm looking at it like this and it's almost a 50 50 on this that's why I'm kind of hesitant hesitant um, first of all I don't like to sell into a into a floor it could do this and then this and then this or it could do like this and this and this can you guys see that? And this is kind of where we are. So it seems to me I could trade it here or here just as easily and not take the 50-50, the, the right? The 50-50 the flip. Okay, does that make sense? Bueller, Bueller. See what the wizard posted. BOE uh, this week, I'm paying attention to the tone of the language and the vote split. Yep. I want to see the Bank of England. We'll have to say about recent uh, move in pound dollar, how they feel about inflation. So, I mean, they like the strong pound, right? Because that's going to slow down their inflation. So even talking about a strong pound is kind of in their best interest. Okay. Yeah, so like in contrast to Echo's post, here's a situation where Ryan is saying, okay, we're near a top, so Echoes was near a bottom, but to me it's the same thing. I mean, I guess I could draw it in similar fashion, right? That here's a top, we're, we're in a, a middle, and it could do one of two things, right? It could do this, this, and this, right? Or it could do this, and this, and this, right? Something like that. And if I had to do the 50-50, there's, right, 
because we're in the middle now, it's a 50-50 chance, essentially, if you're in the middle, right? Thank you, Henley. Appreciate that. It's essentially a 50-50 chance now, right? <clears throat> but in this case, I, I, you know, I kind of feel that this is weaker than this. I mean, either way, if I bought this, I face resistance. <clears throat> If I sell this, I face support, but at least I'm I'm I kind of risking less because I'm only risking that if I'm selling and it rises, and then it seems to me that there's just more room to run down than than up. I don't know. Maybe 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 you stay away and let it do one or the other, and then and then get it. <clears throat> Yeah, so was this, oh, so was this last week? Was this Friday? Yeah. Yeah, pound yen, I see. Yeah, like if you're doing this, so is it is this over the weekend that you posted that? Yeah, okay, Saturday. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I can see the logic of being hot to go H O T T O G O because if you're gonna swing, you need to swing here short. And manage the risk even if you're a bull you can do it because it's simply selling high it's much more difficult to buy high so you would look for the opportunity to, to sell high and then maybe jam your stop because there is this uptrend right but the in interesting thing about uptrends and this is why we talk about multiple time frames is that an uptrend falls a lot. So why couldn't it do something like that? And then if it breaks out this range, I also find that interesting. If it starts doing this now, if it broke up instead of down, right so it's it's the right it's the right area okay and the question really lies you know did you wait till monday and if you waited to Monday, you might have missed it. Because you could sell into the taking profit on Friday, right? Because you could see these, these bulls took profit on Friday. And you could have taken that, jammed your stop up here, and just hope it, it gaps for you. Okay. There's been a few times in my trading career where that's um, the worst case scenario happened, and that's a gap over your, your stop, but that's every five years or something. Okay. I like the logic, though. Like, it's overbought. You're at resistance. You're, you're off a profit zone, so you know these guys are getting out, so, so why wouldn't you, right? And then manage the risk as you go. Right, I mean, that's just, it's a counter trend trade, and that's what, and you need to manage it as such. It's amazing when you when you adjust your expectations uh, accordingly, right? Some people just every time they pull the trigger, it's it's a new random experience. Well, in this case, you're like, 
well, this is clearly an uptrend, and you know this could this could fall, and then people might start buying it up around the M2. So I'm going to short it towards at least the M2. Right? It's it's not certain we're going to hit the pivot profit zone. I think if you're really paying attention to this channel, you're thinking, well, there's no doubt this is a swing sell off of the top, off of the pivot profit zone, off the top of the channel. So someone trading this channel, they're going to target here. And they're going to want to buy it back. Whoever took profit here, cha-ching. So they want to make money. They want to do it again. So they're thinking, eh, I want to buy it at the bottom of the channel. Oh, look, it's an M2. So as a swing trader now, you can say, well, I'm going to take the shot. A swing strategy in a downtrend would say, hey, we got to get to this green zone. But a, a, a short swing in an uptrend could say, well, we're going to come down here, and then we're going to go up that way. I think that's kind of more how I would read into it, but you still got to take the shot and manage the risk. And be ready to stop and reverse in here because of the bottom of the channel, because of the M2. Well, Johan, he's got day, uh, weekly and monthly on here. There's a bunch of things going on. But uh, thank you guys for sharing. I appreciate that. Okay, look at Arslan's now posting. Remember I said Arslan's taking over? He's the he's the guy working on the PhD in economics, so he's actually now posting real-time reviews of what's happening at the Bank of England. News release, here's the jobless claims. So he's doing this through the New York morning for you. Huh? Can I get a big hug? That's for you, baby. Oh, you deserve it. You deserve the best. Come on. That's nice, though, isn't it? You have a PhD working for you. He's like, bam, don't forget that uh, news release. More from Carney. Today's comments uh, in the report are similar, but not the same as November. Bank of England managing a trade-off between growth and inflation. The timing of the next hike will depend on economic data. Brexit impact is still unknown. Here's a link to the actual inflation report at the Bank of England. Huh? Now he's linking you to the report. Now you don't even have to search. Uh, where do I get this information? Right? Boom! Yeah. Huh? Isn't that nice? Well, at least now, you know, you can you can ask as <laughs> long like, hey, so you're working on your PhD, so how's that going? Uh, what's that like? Cool. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's go through this. Yeah, that pivot point there, totally a random walk, totally unpredictable. Yeah, that pivot point there, uh, yeah, that's totally a random walk, completely unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, this whole zone here where it came down, oh, it went a little further, squeezed into psych level, and then reversed. Totally random. <laughs> M5 R R3. What? This is a soul. 
a soul for someone. So these are monthlies overlapping a daily, or uh, monthlies overlapping weekly. What do you think of that? Completely random, isn't it? That USD Swiss franc would go up and essentially double top at the weekly R2 and then drop like a ton of bricks. Completely random. Can't predict these things. Even though that whole red zone means down and you should take profit and get the hell out while well, you can, it, it's just a coincidence that we plotted that area three, you know, four days ago. Look at the bottom, huh? Look at these bottoms, guys. Up, 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 down, down to a pivot point. Up, up, up to a pivot point. Down, down, down to a pivot point. <laughs> up to the target. Do you guys remember that uh, conversation? We must have had it like six months ago. And I'm like, when you hit this, you should just take your profit and volunteer at a museum or a library or, or uh, teach a migrant worker how to read English or, you know, work at a hospital or hang out with some old people. You know, I go to the old folks' home and, you know, right? And they're like, what is it that you do all day? And like, oh, well, I'm a currency trader. Uh, I've been done since Wednesday. That's right. Actually, uh, when David Pegler used to work for me, uh, he went back to South Africa, and he took a suitcase full of flip-flops when he went back to South Africa. Flip-flops. And he's like, you don't understand, man. They're like, it's like gold in South Africa. So he just went back. He went home and handed out flip-flops to people that needed them. Right? David Pegler, one of the best. Wouldn't matter though, right, Peter? You got to choose. Do you need shoes or food? It wouldn't matter. Flip slops. Shoot. I'd eat the flip flops. <laughs> Who's that idiot in the corner? <laughs> ah, he's a wild dog. Just keep your distance, you'll be fine. Don't don't look him in the eye. He's a currency trader. <laughs> don't right? Don't look them in the eye. They go crazy. So anyways. What a great day. I feel so good having spent this time with you. I've been super grumpy lately. Feels like a good day to me. So, yeah, no, it's true. I always feel better. This is the, the best hour of power of my day. So when I am grumpy, I'm like, I got to get to the webinar. This is going to be great. I got to hang out with my team. So thank you for being on my team. Please kind of participate with this experiment that we're doing with um, uh, eight hours a day of real-time news posting for you. So kind of get involved. Uh, I do want to go through your trades more. So will you spend some time posting your trades so that we could review them? And, you know, review other people's posts as well. Ryan spends a ton of time, you know, writing these things for you, give them some feedback. And then, uh, uh, like I said, I'm going to meet with the programmer actually today. And I want to redesign so, like, you, you drag a, a, a chart right and it loads and then you start to write I want to kind of change that process once you have the editor up I want to make that a lot easier and simpler like I just wanted like like a pure WYSIWYG like insert image right 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 change that to a, a, a title 
oh, I want to add another image and then right, right, right. And then ideally what we do is then you say, well, what currency pair is this? And you say it's euro and dollar. And then because of that, we can then organize the site so you could say, I want to see all trades re regarding euro and, you know, or dollar, right? And it'll pull it up and organize it in that fashion, not just a euro dollar, not just a trade. Yeah, so I got to find what that is, okay? Right. Well, Brooke, it's up. It's up to us to create the culture at this in this community that we want. Right. So it's funny. Twenty five people can complain about like, oh, well, I never get feedback. Well, if there's twenty five people complaining about not getting feedback, why aren't the twenty five people leaving feedback for each other? And then if they do that, then others inevitably will follow. So like, if you look at like. Uh, sociology or behavioral finance or whatever way you want to study uh, a social science but you look at an audience and and it's sort of like the emperor's new clothes like they all they all act the same because they all think they're thinking different so like in that experiment I, I, I uh, that happened uh, that I told you about in my class yesterday well well this 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 Nobel Prize winner just read a big, long, three-paragraph statement of babbling, of economic babble that made no sense. But we all thought it was a real lecture, right? Now, I, I was arrogant enough where I'm like, I, I'm totally following this. I completely understand what he's talking about. Well, of course, he wasn't talking about anything, so obviously I was a fool. But then everyone else in the class, or, or most people, the vast majority of people in the audience, they're looking at each other, and they're like, they're thinking to themselves, oh, my God, I don't understand this guy. He's way over my head. This class is, like, beyond me, <laughs> right? Like, I don't get it. I must be stupid. Everyone else is smarter than me. Well, everyone else is sitting around like, I don't get this guy. This is way over my head. I, I, I don't know what he's talking about, right? And, and every, it's collective ignorance is what it's called, right? So it's like. You know how we end this? Let's just let's just leave feedback for each other. Okay? And let's improve it. And if there's a bug somewhere like that won't like, then, you know, let me know and we'll, we'll yell at somebody, right? Like, here's the thing. It's our community. We can create the culture we want by living and, and acting the way we want the, the community as a whole to act. And, it, you know, so let's just do it, right? It's ours. It's ours for the taking. You're not going to be able to change the culture at Facebook because there's 40 billion accounts, which is weird because there isn't 40 billion people. But, um, but look how small and wonderful and unique our community is. We're a band of brothers and sisters that are changing our world by becoming incredibly um, skilled um, and successful currency traders. In two or three years, other people come around like, look at this community. Wow. This is epic. This is what I need. Well, that's what you need now, so let's just do that. And in three years, someone will, else will join and say, wow, this is exactly what I've been looking for. Cool. We just made the entire world a better place by starting with making your world a better place. So it's going to take time, but being extraordinary um, is very inconvenient. Okay, cool. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thank you for being a client to Trader's Way. And I will see you tomorrow, huh? So TGIFT, thank God it's Forex today. Cheers. <laughs>